he said himself he played too much after the injury and he looks like a lad who's just shattered. What you should just do is refresh and, and, and hone around it. We need to buy at least four. At least four. And look, Man United did this plenty of times where there's juice left in the old in the old guard. Like Real Madrid, are, Real Madrid are doing it too. They've obviously started. They they've done the last two seasons has been their 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 transition in a way. And this summer will be probably the final. Imagine winning the European Cup in your transition. I know, but that's the which is the, 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 the great. That's what I've said for weeks. The greatest annoyance about Real Madrid is that when they're transitioning, they win league titles and European Cups, and we have to fucking scrap out in the middle of the table for Europa League places. But we. You can get, you can keep Van, Van Dijk. You could get four more seasons out of Virgil Van Dijk as a top centre half because we made this mistake with Hippier, where we actually moved him on a season too soon because it was like a worry that he was he was fading too fast. We let Gerard go a season too soon. Carragher was probably about right, but you might have got another. I got that. A renaissance as well, didn't yeah, you? Like exactly. Resurgence. Yeah, exactly. And it, it does, you know, you look at great, and it's great sporting sides as well. You even look at like basketball and look at the Bulls and and, and you know and, and that kind of stuff. They're they're great teams. And, it's definitely possible, but the lads who are coming through have got to be, you've got to have the balance right. Because where we fucked it in the past was the, the old guard who are fading don't end up a supportive thing. They end up a bit of a millstone and a bit of a hindrance, and they don't want to do the work. They don't want to put the yards in anymore. And I don't think we're going to know that until the summer with someone like Virgil van Dijk because he's such a languid character. I've seen him fight a bit more. I don't think, does he, does he want to? Fight to make the, I put, the team. I saw again. him I take two fifty fifties against City that I don't think I've ever seen him take, and that was the best yeah. two minutes of the entire yeah. game. Is that the one where we we nearly give it away oh, and it we just amazing. started swatting the ball at each other's feet? Yeah. It was brilliant. That was the it best was, we played it in. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and it, it was the, Virgil twice, yeah. and you're like, go on. Yeah. The away end went mental because of it, yeah. and I think we actually got the ball back and we went forward and we screamed them forward. My, I think. I think what makes me feel even worse about it is Manchester City in that period, yet they're still at the top, but Liverpool have won one Premier League trophy in that time. And for me, it felt like if we never... We, we might be brilliant, but we might never be that Liverpool side that I think is the best side to like yeah. I've ever seen well, I don't think City, Liverpool. I, but I don't think City will be that City side as well, by the way. That's that's but what the, gives me encouragement. The, yeah. I don't think they're I don't think they're gonna be that the good. The thing for Ever City you've got going for them, which is why they they drop off, even though they've not been as good this season, it's been fine. They drop their, off second place. Their ability, it's more it's and Real Madrid are the same. They can team. take losses on footballers that we can't. And again, this comes all the way back to the ownership and again, people who are upset with Liverpool's owners, and I get that I do. That's always that's the biggest limitation. Because Liverpool pay decent wages they pay competitive wages we've got a huge wage budget a comparative wage budget for the top for the top four of the Premier League and for world football when transfer fees need to be paid they'll, they'll, they'll pay them they're brilliant at getting value and selling players on but that's our our, our uh, Oxley Chamberlain and Naby Keita don't still play for Manchester City no. in that in that in that environment they just don't yeah you just... then you've got we have to get ours almost perfect yeah, that's true and and the, the, because it didn't get catered perfect. It did not again. Chamberlain, I think, was harsh because of the injuries. Yeah. Thiago, perfect player, but the injury. Like all of a sudden, you got three wrong, and you're like, ah, fuck. Yeah. Where if City got three wrong, they'd just they'd be gone, and they'd have three more lads who have just wheeled in. You know, they got they got the striker wrong, so they just going by Ellen Haaland. Or- Car- Carius is a good example of like what well, was getting it right. He's, he's the wrong keeper, and unfortunately, he's the wrong keeper. You know, if you'd gone bigger the summer before, you could have made, could you got a better goalie in, and then he doesn't make the mistake, and you got another European Cup in the bag. Maybe who knows? But it's addressing the issue and going out and go right. Okay, we've tried to do this on the cheap. We can't afford to do this on the cheap. Let's go and spend the money to get it right. Van Dijk was the same way. He tried to fix. He's had in the end. No, we and look, and, and look, and I think we have been. And you mentioned the attack. I think we have been proactive in that regards. And again, I know what Diaz is not too proactive. Yeah, yeah. But Diaz is not going to come in and fix this season. But he is the player that he is. That he's got that indomitable spirit that Sadio Mane's yeah. got. That you, that he'll drag it over the line. Crystal Palace when Darwin Nunes gets sent off, he's the one guy go fuck this. I'm not losing this game, and he's the one trying to get us, trying to get the back into it. In our, the game that he gets injured in, you know, Arsenal, he he's dragging yeah. us into that into that game. We need more of those characters, and we we, we can certainly we can, can certainly do that again. The other thing I think Jürgen needs. Sorry, since that mm-hmm. post. The other thing I think Jürgen needs is I think. This idea of like that small squad thing with the substitute, I want to see him change that because I don't think 
that a small squad can do 63 games and I think that's proof the, the proof's in the pudding yeah. almost isn't it not without literally setting fire to the whole thing and starting again and getting a brand new squad that haven't yeah. been overworked you, at you all need, you need and that's where the three to four signings are probably first teamers but you need maybe three to yeah. four that are going to refresh that squad as well because with the five and, subs everything else you need to be able to refresh quickly and often I'm hoping know? that like I think the Van Dyke thing's a physical thing I don't think it's a I don't think he's a lesser player, and I don't think it's a mentality thing. I think it's, it's and he, he said himself, he played too much after the injury, and he looks like a lad who's just shattered. Uh, confidence might be taking a hit as well. I'm I'm less worried about Van Dyke, uh, but some of them, Fabinho's the one. I, I'm 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 there with Henderson, but again, Henderson's thirty odd. Like he should be doing the James Milner role. He's playing every game. But it, this, Fabinho, that's the big summer is that Fabinho's Henderson, for example, as well, is another one where. I mean, we talked about this when we were talking about Milner on Pint the other week, is what does he want from his career now? Does he want to see a lot of diminishing returns? Because again, this is where we got, this is where we had it. We've Liverpool been here before, and under under FSG, when they took over, we had too many players who were on too high a wage for where Liverpool were at. And that's where it's a really fine margin of error here for what, how we get things right. Can we top up and go again? Probably most most likely, or do we need to burn it all down and 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 start start from scratch? And that's going to be a really really painful process because if you remember, you know, people think like hating FSG is a new thing. It's not. People thought they were asset strippers and they had no way, no understanding what they were doing. But it re- in reality, they had to get rid of Gerard, and they had to get rid of Kite, and they had to get rid of Carragher, and they had to get rid of the Mascarano go before Pepe them Reina. or after them. It was, but yeah, Pepe Reina is a good example. The lads who we were like, no, these are good, these are good players, keep them around. Yeah, but they're earning four times as much money as the, as the younger, hungrier members of the, of the squad. They're, the most, they're not providing value in terms of what they're doing, and we're on that real cusp of that at the moment so, and Jordan Henderson is a good example of that what does Jordan want to do does he want to see a reduced role does he want to play multiple roles in the side and continue to be more figurehead captain and take him over James Miller role because if not then that needs to be addressed because you don't. what you don't want is that situation where Gerrard's too embarrassed to be on the bench because he's a star and he, he doesn't like his, his, his star fading Van Dyke might find himself in that situation, you know, and a, and and a couple of others as well. That's the real, that's a real tricky balance, isn't it? The the issue I've got right is that there are some players now who we're going to keep this summer because we've got too much to do elsewhere. Yes, yeah. but don't, like, that's but, you know, my I mean, like, problem. With all due respect, like the people could tell Jordan Henderson this summer based on his performances, and we'd all go, Jordan, amazing, thank you so much, brilliant captain, you won everything. Go and go and go and fill, go and have it. Go three years running around the field in a mid table team, whatever. But we can't because we're losing Chamberlain, Cater. Definitely Bobby Firmino, probably James Milner. Already, you've got four things. A centre half, Matip. Can I can I give you an analogy on this? And Chris, Chris any, anyone ever worked at the Tavern Company on Smith Down Road will know this one. But Chris and I will know That's this. That's a best. very niche set yeah. of people. <laughs> but other restaurants will do Quite this. Quite a lot though. <laughs> <For the rest. laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what we used to do is they'd buy a load of glass tomato ketchup bottles because they look bosh and the business and it's and it's time to ketchup, but he would then buy the plastic squeezy ones and top them up. And the problem with the top up is most of the time it's absolutely fine, it's no issue. But sometimes if it was done in the wrong order or whatever, the the old stuff at the bottom would ferment, and what you would effectively have was a tomato hand grenade. Hand grenade. <laughs> yeah, so it would ferment, and it, and what it would become explosive basically. So in trying to top up, it, it, from the outside it's fine, but every now and again if you got it wrong, you'd open a lid on a tomato ketchup and it'd go. And it, and it would fucking blow up in blow up in your face, the customer's face. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and I've had that happen to me as a customer several times in that restaurant. And that's a bit like where we're at. Is that your your safest bet is to literally wash the bottle out and start from scratch. But it takes more time and it costs more money to do that because that every single drop of ketchup is a is a serving on someone's on someone's plate. And in this regard, Liverpool, you'd be foolish to get rid of all these lads. What you should just do is refresh and and, and hone around it. But as we exist in that world where what if it just, just doesn't have it anymore? And I mean by that, like, what if he just hasn't got that 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 ember, that fire in him that says, go a little bit harder, push a little bit further? What if those lads have lost that? And so you go out and spend £200 million, £250 million in the summer, you buy four new players, but actually... Yeah. What, you, what you were what you were topping up isn't good enough. They, yeah. That's an interesting analogy, a perfect analogy actually. I think for what for what Liverpool have got. My big concern over like the midfield is not so much the defenders and stuff like that, but moving forwards in terms of upgrading them is we are the most intense team at our best, 
And I'll be honest with you now, I don't think Jordan Henderson and Fabinho can ever be as intense as we need them in a the midfield. Certainly not twice a week. Not twice a week. But that, and, and that's, look, I love them to bits. Mm-hmm. And I think Jordan Henderson's probably been the best captain of my lifetime in terms of me being an adult. And Steve Gerrard was a much better player, but I think in terms of what Jordan Henderson brought as a captain, yeah. it could be argued that he was better. Um but I don't think he's got the intensity that Liverpool needs, and I don't see any of the others really at the moment who are in by, any. Maybe by Chatter, just the only one potentially. Yeah, and and that is exists as potential. Yeah. We know what, what can happen between a nineteen year old and a twenty three year old midfield, and anything can fucking go wrong, can't yeah, it? He's so, the only one, and that's that's the thing. And I mean, I I don't doubt Harvey Elliott's intensity, but whether he's got the physicality for to do the complete midfield thing that we've been looking for. Um, is so concern. I so I listen. There is a there is a world where. Jordan Henderson has a role in the squad. Does he have a role as a midfielder? If Liverpool want to compete on four fronts every single season, I think he could. It's a diminishing role. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's, a, it's a diminishing. It's a, it's a very it's a diminished home role. against X amount of team role when you've got other lads doing the run. Well, look like, at James Mill. Well, James Mill looking go to the Bernabeu and have a boss game at thirty-seven. And, and yeah, exactly. But like, you, that's my, that's your point, isn't it? Is you go from being a one game a week player. To a sixty-minute game a week player, to a thirty, two thirty, to maybe two thirties as you're sixty, and then you're playing, a, you're playing a bit part, but you've eased out and you've handed the bat on over. I think what you're kind of saying is, who's who's in our leadership group? Who's stepping up? We went from a team of captains who could who were all led by example. They all led the way. They all were supportive. They all ran the ran the ran the socks off. To I look at the who's come in now, and I don't see. I, I I hate Virgil van Dijk wearing that captain's armband. He, he, he's he's a Steven Gerrard captain for me, who he gets he, he whinges. You know what I mean? And that's his thing. He's a brilliant footballer. You lead by being when you give your best player the captain's armband. That's a great sign that you're on the slide. I think, or you're not a top top level side. You need someone who can physically who's, who's got the captain's attributes. Robbo's got them, but he's a left back, and he's another one who spends half his half his game running up and down. So I can't, has he even got the energy left to? Shout at people when he need, when he needs to. Who knows? It's a the, it's a weird yeah another another issue. What I will say is I am actually surprisingly excited for the summer. Not just because football will finish and I will finally be happy, <laughs> um, but I'm excited because I don't think we've had a season where I've been this excited for signings. We need to buy at least four, at least four. And if Liverpool don't do that, we'll. Good luck for next season because yeah. it's going to be worse than this. Yeah. And I think, I think Jurgen Klopp knows it. I think the and if Jurgen Klopp tells the owners, I think the owners then realise oh, we're going to have to do something here because what happens next year if we don't back the club, don't back Jurgen, and we have to get rid of Jurgen? Well, it's going to be looking bad on us, not Jurgen, because Jurgen's not had the facilities. So I'm actually excited to see what we do because I. I maybe I'm overthinking it in terms of being too optimistic. I think we go and buy five players, and I hope they're massive players because we need them. So at least that is what has got me excited. Yeah, we may be absolutely crap at football in this moment, but I'm hoping that we go and buy some of the best players Liverpool, who can take us somewhere. 